Hello and welcome, my friends. I'm so glad you've come to visit with me. Yeah, I like to think of this little time we have here as a visit and not necessarily that I'm trying to make a video, but saying hello to people as well as just sharing what's going on in my life, um, a lot with stitching, but also with some other things that might be happening, um, maybe outside, maybe with our other family members. Anyway, all that kind of good stuff. Um, a special shout out hello to Doreen, who is Dee Dee Stitches, if you follow her on Instagram. If you don't, you can go over there and find her. She does a lot. <laughs> She's constantly um, posting uh, not only updates, but new starts, it seems like. So she's just busy stitches, stitches, stitching. Um, another shout out hello I wanted to say was to Deb. And Deb is the gal who is local here who got me started doing those, um, what I'm calling as floss files because they kind of look like they're files that open up and close and, and everything. Um, and I will talk more about those later, but she's the gal who was the one who inspired me to start doing it. Um, so hello, Deb. Okay, so let's get going with what's going on for today and all the things we're going to talk about and share. It's kind of a nice day out. You can see that I'm getting some light in from the window. Um, a little cloudy and overcast. I'm not sure if it's going to rain today or not. We kind of had off and on rain. It's getting to be that season, you know, fall. When we lived in Minnesota, fall was always a very dry time. Um, Whenever you see pictures of people raking up their leaves into a big pile and jumping into them, that's what we did in Minnesota. If we tried to do that here, <laughs> they'd be wet. They'd be wet leaves, wet icky leaves. So um, it doesn't work so much trying to do that here in Oregon. Uh, we had just enough rain to, to make that a little bit harder to do. But yeah, out in the Midwest, it seemed like it stayed much drier throughout the fall. And so you not only had the pretty colors to look at, but then you had, I guess you could call it the fun <laughs> of raking up the leaves and putting them in piles and jumping in them if you wanted to. Um, something kind of fun fact that people probably don't realize unless you have to do this is that when you do rake up those piles of leaves, um, it's not always just leaves. A lot of times you have other things like sticks or potentially acorns, pine cones, whatever might be around in the yard as well. So you kind of have to be careful jumping in those leaf piles because you might land on something that's not soft and fluffy like a leaf. <laughs> But we did do that with our kids. We did that a few times where we would rake those up and let them jump in them. But um, yeah, kind of fun stuff you can do during the fall time. All right, we have a lot to get to, lots of different things. So I'm gonna try to make sure we get this done in a reasonable amount of time. I know lately it seems like because I'm only doing these videos once a month, they tend to be closer to an hour long. So I hope it's not, but you never know. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see the order. What should we do first? <clears throat> hmm. Hmm. Let's do a couple of little small finishes that I did. Let's start off with that. <clears throat> All right. They are very, very, very small finishes. <laughs> These are one of them I started and I think I'd showed you a little bit of progress on it. The second one I hadn't even started at all yet. Um, and so I just, for some reason, I had time or I needed small things to work on. And so, and I'm kind of one of those, that once I start, I want to keep working on it. Not necessarily to finish it, but maybe longer than I should if I want to kind of get to more of my rotation. So, so these are the ones that I did. Aren't they just adorable? So there's this one. And there's this one. So these are the little Mill Hill kits. This is perforated paper. And um, there was, I think, about four or five in this series. And I could get a hold of two. There was one more that I wanted, but I wasn't really interested in the rest. And I, But I wasn't able to get the, the third one that I wanted. Um, but yeah, stitched and lots of little beads everywhere. And then each of them has a little charm. This has got a dragonfly and this has a little pumpkin hanging on it. Very cute, very cute. So I do need to cut around these. 
And then they do give you, I don't remember the directions ever saying this because I've done several different little kits like this. Um, but in this time, it did give some directions for this and I don't know if they've seen other people doing it and so that's why they started including it. But they did indicate that when you make a hanger, if that's the way you're gonna finish this, they give you extra beads on purpose for that reason. So I thought that was really cool that they're doing that now. Um, so yeah, I can finish this off and put a hanger on it at the top. Um, I kind of was thinking, what would I do with these? Because I could put these on my little Halloween tree if I wanted to. This would be very appropriate. This maybe not as much for Halloween, but it's like, well, what do I do with them? And then I started thinking, here's an idea too, is that if you are, um, whether it's for a display in your home or if, if you're going to do it as a gift, you can make a small um, hanger and then maybe put it around a bottle of wine and let it hang down. So as you put it around that neck, it would hang and then just kind of hang in the front of it. Wouldn't that be kind of cute idea for something like that? If you are a wine drinker or you want to give somebody a gift for that. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of different things to do with these if I don't just... How, how am I going to display these? You know, you can also stick it on, a, put a good size magnet on it so it's it'll hold the weight and put it on something. Um, you know, there's some ideas too. So I don't know exactly what I'm going to do for finishing these off, but they're so cute and season appropriate. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to quick tell you about something non-stitchy related because that's the only actually finished finish I have. I've got some uh, whips I worked on and some new starts, but I'm going to kind of jump to one little thing that happened to me in this last month um, and it was while I was working outside. So I'm going to show you those videos real quick. Getting ready to uh, move some of this dirt out of the way into other areas now that the patio is done I can fill in dirt next to it and such and as I was moving the plastic so that the weed wouldn't grow on it I came across this you got it it's a snake skin it's a good size snake skin it's not enormous but it's good enough and now I'm gonna have to move this dirt and potentially find this critter Though I hope not because that is one of the things I don't like is snakes. I don't care how big or little. <sighs> not looking forward to this. And here what it looked like when it's all spread out. <sighs> so he's not super big around. Probably just a garter snake or something like that. But I don't care. I don't like him. He's uh, probably, if this is his full length, around 18 to 24 inches. Good size. Yeah, that was a shock. <laughs> when I uncovered that thing, that was a shock. Um, and I think I mentioned in the video, I don't like snakes. Snakes are... I can appreciate them when I look at them in some kind of displays, whether they're like at zoos or um, conservatories. Sometimes I'll keep different animals that are native to those areas. Um, and I can appreciate looking at them. And I have actually touched them sometime, I think a couple of times, where they might have had like a um, a bull snake out. So it's it's not a threat or anything. And, and a handler was holding it and I, I did touch it, but it's kind of like just out in the wild, watching them, not knowing what they're going to do and the way they slither away. And it's like, no, 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 no. I don't like snakes. I don't like snakes. So <laughs> we're getting to the season now where I'm probably not going to be outside so much. Um, I showed you what our, our, uh, cement look like that we had put in as walkways and the patio and I'm in the process of getting stairs put back on our front porch so we can get off of it a little easier it's um it's a very big step down if I choose to do that I do have like the little step stool out there so that I can use that if I don't feel like jumping off or making that big step 
So that's something else that I'll get done, but probably one of the last things I will do outside because it's just getting cold and um, rainy and just not, it's not conducive for working outside anymore. So, so you won't have to put up with those videos anymore. <laughs> not until the weather turns and I get outside again. So maybe I'll show you projects I'm doing inside instead. Okay, let's um, talk about some more stitchy stuff. So let's do whips and then I'll do purchases later. All right, so the first one that I, this is a new start and the reason I started this is I, on our Friday nights when we go do stuff with our friends, I feel like there's a little hair tipping the tip of my nose. Um, I normally take stitching stuff with me because a lot of times we'll sit in, um, there we call it the theater room where we watch movies or whatever and i'll take stuff to work on while i'm we're over there doing them and a couple weeks ago i didn't take anything with me i didn't feel like taking anything with me i didn't have time all those kind of things wrapped up at the same so it's like once that evening starts like well I really kind of wish I would have had something well I had enough time to go to some stores beforehand and I happened to just pick up a quick little kit that I could start I didn't need to have a magnifier um, you know I could do all the things while I was there with this kit I think the only thing I didn't have was some scissors but if I stayed with one color that was long enough I was gonna be fine <laughs> um, and so it was just this it's very, very cute. Um, I love the C look to it. I also like the verse. Um, so that will be very appropriate for what I want. I might, I don't know, because it's a simple project, I may just do regular cross stitch for the lettering, but um, maybe I will do more of a cursive thing if I feel like charting that. I don't know. I haven't gotten that far yet, obviously. So I have worked on this quite a bit because like I said, once I start something, I kind of want to keep working on it. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to keep working on this or try. I really need to try to get to some of those other whips is what I'm saying. So this is how far I've gotten. So some of the sky way over here. Otherwise it's the water with some sand and um, part of the lighthouse. So yeah. It's just on a 14 count Ada. That's what it came with with the kit. Um, I wasn't, you know, super picky about what fabric I was going to stitch it on. So I, I was fine with that. It, it's just a quick little stitch to work on. And then it's turned into this monopolizing my time stitch to work on. <laughs> oh, well, what are you going to do? Um, okay. The next one... I think I'll talk about my Hade real quick because I did stitch on it finally. I know you've been missing it for several months because I started working outside. <sighs> so I worked on it. Yay! So here I'm going to show you the before clip. And here is what it's going to, what it's looked like since I got my hands on it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Ta-da! <laughs> that is all I got done, people. I just did some of that, this blue book. <laughs> I feel in a little bit of this. That is it. It's kind of a pitiful amount. Hopefully, hopefully more next time. Yeah. <laughs> it's not very much. I think I worked on it for two or three days or evenings when I do my stitching. So I hardly got anything done. Hopefully this next month I will work on it more. But like I said, once I start on stuff, it's kind of like I just want to keep stitching on it. Like the little ocean and beach thing. And another project I'm going to show you is like, ah, I just can't stop stitching on it sometimes. Or it's just, I'm not in the mood. I'm not in the mood to go find the next whip I need to work on. And it's like, oh, I've already been working on this. I'm just going to pull that out and keep working on it. So 
The next one that I started working on was this. So this is the um, Linens and Threads Mystery Sampler for this year. This is pattern, I think this is, I know it says February up here, but I think this was the March one. Um, there was one month that she didn't change um, that up there. Uh, so yeah, I think this was the March one because the first month, I think all you did was some outlining. Well, maybe this was February. You did outlining and then there was, there's stuff that's gonna go inside of these little areas here as well as all these squares. And as you can see, something else will go down here. So I'm showing you this particular pattern because this is what I have gotten done. I have the pattern pieces like up through, I think this one actually. So I don't have this one and I don't have what's down here yet because those will be in November and December's. If you wanted to get this, you still could. It is on their website um, for the 2021 Mystery Sampler. I think she has a couple others up there still available if you're interested. Um, but yeah, it's coming along. And the reason I've started this so late is because I was waiting for the floss I wanted to use. I was, I had one type of colorway very much in mind. I had seen somebody else do theirs and I really liked what they did. Not that I'm doing that colorway at all, but it just kind of gave me an idea and therefore kind of prompted me to start doing something. So I started looking and looking and looking to find the exact coloring that I wanted because it is variegated, but I wanted specific colors in the variegation. I found one that was the exact idea of what I was looking for. So I ordered it. It took like three months or more to get to me because their supplier didn't have, they, they were waiting and waiting and waiting for it to come. So let me pull it out of the bag and show you the yumminess that is this floss because I really, really, really like it. Is that yummy or what? Let me put white behind it so you can really, really see it. It is just yummy. It's called Tequila Sunrise. So it's got orange and pinks and yellows in it, just like a sunrise. Nice and bright, which is what I wanted. It's just yummy, just yummy. So I wasn't sure when I got this, you know, what floss I was getting. I didn't necessarily, I might have heard of this brand before, but I wasn't sure. It's by Karen, C-A-R-O-N, um, Wildflowers. There's the tag. Okay. So I wasn't really sure what floss I was getting when I when I ordered it. And I didn't care because it was the color that I wanted. And I was having a very, very hard time finding what I wanted. Um, it's almost like a pearl cotton. So you can see it's much thicker and you only use the one strand, obviously. So it's much thicker than like a DMC six strand or any other kind of floss. So yeah, much more like a pearl cotton. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Um, because I, you're going to see the, what I did and it's gorgeous. I love it. Love it. Love it. All right. So da, 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 da. here it is. Isn't that yummy? <laughs> I love it. And then I love it on the darker fabric, which is exactly what I wanted. So. You can see it is just so mm, 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 mm. so good. So I did not do all of the border pieces. I just did the center one, and then this is one of the months. Um, but yeah, I'll get to it eventually. I get to all of those. This was another thing that was kind of like monopolizing my time because the more I did, the more I wanted to reveal and see of it. Um, and so I definitely kept working on it till I got all of this square done and then I had done 
you know, a bit of that middle section so I could really, really see it. So this fabric is very, very nice. Um, let me see. It is called, this is from Picture This Plus. What was it? <laughs> Why do I not see what it's called? Oh, Dusk. It was just called Dusk is what the fabric was called. It is a 14 count. It is Ada, but it's the really, really soft Ada. I chose that because I had actually started this on some other fabric and I didn't like the way it was turning out. So I'm going to show you that just so you guys can see a difference. I think this was, the, so here's what I started with. So it's a little more gray, which I did like. I think I like what I have better. Um, and that's kind of the bottom area of this. Now, as a single line like this, it was fine. It looked, it looked all right. But as I got down to the bottom and I started putting more and more stitches next to each other, it did not look so fine. I mean, it looks kind of okay there, but it, they just look too crowded when I did this. So I don't know if it's really going to show up how, um, how different it is. Uh, this was a 36 count. So the equivalent of, um, you know, like an 18 count, which is just too tight. It was too small. Um, let me see some, yeah. Uh, so it just kind of bunched the stitches too close together when they were packed next to each other. So I'm going to just save this for something else because I had more than I needed for this project anyway. Um, and so now I can make it look real pretty on here. It's going to be bigger because it's a 14 count versus the equivalent of an 18 count. It's going to make the project a bigger size, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm fine with that. It's going to look great when I am all finished with it. Okay. I'm trying to find all the places for my stuff. Um, I think I told you all the information I needed to about those. I did get one other, because, you know, a lot of times people will say, you can't just order one thing when you order stuff. you got to order at least two so they come together. So I did get some more fabric along with this fabric because I did order it. And that was this stuff. Very pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Nice kind of fall colors. And this, mm -hmm, why is it not showing up on those labels as well? Lupine. So this is a piece of lupine from Picture This Plus as well. And it is also a 14 count because I wasn't sure part of the reason I got a second piece of fabric is I wasn't sure 100% what color fabric I wanted to stitch this on. It's like, do I want a complementary color or do I want something where it's really, really going to stand out? So I wasn't sure if I wanted something like this or the gray. And I think this is far better, far better. So I'll keep this for some other kind of project. So that's what I did with that. Um, so I think those are my main stitching things that I did. So I am going to show you another thing before I get to more some more stitching stuff. So I'm going to put that in here real quick. Right. And here is... A fun a fall look. Uh, I wanted to show you this. Not that it's a super, super cute layout, but um, what I did. So I um, got these leaves, which is basically this. I mean, you can get these at the dollar store or wherever. And I pulled them off. So they're just kind of glued on here. And these actually pull off these veins really, really easily. Um, you just do it carefully and then I just glued them in here if you ever get that um, metallic confetti stuff that you might put on a table or something that are leaves and whatnot don't use those <laughs> like I've tried and they I would regardless of what I use they don't stay glued or taped or anything into the um, 
the pages. Um, these are, they pop up a little bit, but they're not nearly as bad. And I think if I use those dots, those glue dots, that's the brand, um, those are super, super sticky. Uh, they would have stayed down even better, but they're staying pretty well in here the way they are. So now we'll move to another page. Is this fun or what? So the reason I started doing this page is because I thought we were going to go see the new James Bond movie this week because when I had looked stuff up, it was supposed to open the 29th. And then when I went and did, did a little bit more digging, it didn't open to the following week, but I had already started designing this page, so I just left it on here. Most of this stuff is clip art stuff from my computer. So I just went into a Google page and searched uh, images, variety of images, and this is what I ended up with. So this big giant film reel with the thing, I, I love that. Um, so I made it nice and big so it fits. I had to just cut it and make it fit on two, um, two pages, and then that's the way I wanted it. And then everything else, like I said, um, the camera, the popcorn, the soda, the tickets, all the stars, the candies, the different candies all over, the clapperboard, all of that. Um, and then these sayings here, and it's showtime. Um, everything was clip art that I looked up and ended up using um, stuff that I found that way. And I just print it onto, like, it's a full sheet sticker page, like a label page. And that's what I end up using. Um, the boxes, the text boxes, it's just pieces of that same sticker paper that I cut into squares and then I just drew these um, designs around or I just made solid, I used a black pen and made solid lines around it. Um, simple, simple stuff. So if you're wanting something fun and quirky and just, you know, a little different and interesting, there's an idea for you. And here is the last one that I will show you. This is obviously before the pin, before I put in any information for my week. This is the one I'm most proud of, I guess you could say, or that I really just am so happy how it turned out. It is a hillside, um, multiple layers of a hillside with fog sitting in the little valleys and whatnot. Um, yeah, I really, really like how this turned out. This is um, pretty much something I did uh, freehand. I did have an actual picture of a mountainside with fog in it to look at, but I pretty much um, did this on my own. What I did is multiple layers of paper to get this look. So you got the brown, there's greens, there's this kind of blue tealish color back here, and the white is a vellum. So you can kind of see behind it. So if I had more things behind her, they would, they would stand out. I mean, you can really tell right up in here. Otherwise, you can't see it. You can't tell as much. Um, got a few little fun things like this map with the Never Stop Exploring. A couple of other things here. Travel more, hello adventure, all that kind of stuff. Fun things. So yeah, I just love, love, love how this turned out. Uh, don't know if everybody this is their base cup of tea or everybody wants to put this much effort into it because it does take a little while to get it all all done and because it is multiple layers it is pretty thick and so I had to hand cut out the notches because my punch would not work for the layers um, if you had used like a regular thickness paper for these layers uh, it might not have been so bad but this is more of cardstock unfortunately <laughs> So I had to hand cut those out. Anyway, just wanted to show you a few ideas in case you are a planner and you wanted to have some fresh new ways of doing some stuff, some pages. So that was basically, you know, I wanted to give you, I had done a video where I was showing you planner pages and I thought I would do it um, like once a month, show you different weeks that I had done. And it was just like, I think I started working at my job, the new job I had gotten, and it's just like, 
I don't have time for this anymore. So I had done a couple in the last few weeks that I was just like, wow, I really, really like these. I like how they turn out. And so I wanted to share them with you just a quick little bit. And that way you can get some ideas if you're one of those planner people as well. Okay, so I think the next thing we're going to move on to are some more purchases. So I showed you the purchases that were relevant to that project I was stitching on. But then I, I went to Acorns and Threads, which I haven't been there for a couple of months. Just because, for one, I really haven't needed anything and just time-wise and money-wise and everything, I haven't gone. Um, so I did go and I got a couple of things there. And then in the last couple of weeks, I've also ordered some stuff as well. Mostly patterns. We all know none of us really need more patterns, but we do it anyway. Okay, so let's get to those. And of course, but like I said before, you can't just order one thing. You got to order at least two. So that made you start looking more. And because I had one thing that I saw, I'm like, oh, I need to go find this. And then of course you find more. So one of them was this. I really like her. This is the um, Shannon Christine designs. I've got some fairy houses that I'm doing that's designed by her. I think there's some other things I've done by her and it's just nice whimsical things most of the time that I'm getting that are from her. So there's that. In case you didn't see it's Ice Castles is what the name of the pattern is. It's just very sweet. Very sweet. I like it. Um, and so the other things I got from her, <laughs> gnome for Christmas, instead of home for Christmas, gnome for Christmas. And of course I can change the date on here. So this is an older pattern, but I saw it and I'm like, oh my goodness, I love that. So cute. So there's that. Then the main thing that I had gotten on there to find and then found those other two was this one. That's so neat. Ugh. Obviously seasonal appropriate as well as I just, I love greens as well. Greens and blues are my thing. Um, so this is called Autumn Blessings. But yeah, very cute. So there's those. Not done yet, I found some more. Now not through the Shannon Christine stuff. Um, I saw somebody else's post on Instagram and I went to this particular designer's website and didn't see the exact thing that I wanted. So I'm not sure if it was still available because I think it was a freebie when she had gotten it. And it might just not be available anymore. So I was looking around in her site and found a couple of things that I wanted from her. And that was this. So this is a PDF. So this is the main thing. So I'm going to cover that up so you can kind of see. So it's a... This is related to the princesses, the Disney princesses. So this would be Mulan. Um, so more of a Chinese gown. And of course it has a fan. I'm not sure why there's a bunny because there really wasn't a bunny in the movie. Um, but fan. And then you're making these little flower rosette things as well to go on that. And then the ribbon that trails out so pretty. I don't know that I'll do it on red fabric. Um, haven't really thought that far ahead yet, but just so pretty. And another princess one that I got, because I only end up two. There were, there was a couple other that might have been maybes, but it's kind of like, do I really love it enough that I really want to get it? And I just decided not to do any more except for these two. And that's this one. This is Aurora Sleeping Beauty. So look at all those pretty flowers and then the variegation from the blue to the pink. It's got this bouquet of those flowers that you make, the ribbon that trails off on the side as well. And then these, I figured out, these are the three fairies. So they're the pink, green, and blue. And in both cases, I don't know if you noticed, they do have crowns. The other one had a crown as well. I guess you could choose to stitch or not stitch. Um, I don't know if it freaks people out to have them look like this and no body <laughs> attached to it. So there's no body, no face. 
And yet, you know, you've got this crown sitting above, but that's okay. I'm fine with it. <laughs> but yeah, it is so pretty. So pretty. So can't wait to get my hands doing some of that. All right. Still not done. Now we're to the stuff that I got at Acorns. And I saw this, I think, maybe when Market came out. And I just never got around to... And it's like in the spring, that Market. Um, just never really got around to going and doing and finding anything from that. So I finally went and got it. Because now it's available besides just getting it through that. And that's this one. So this is Token of Fall. It is... Hello from Liz Matthews. Um, look at that bird. Look at the bird. So if nothing else, I'm going to stitch the bird with the leaves and the acorn and maybe not stitch the, the lettering and the border. I don't know yet. But the bird is what made me want this. So, and the fabric I got is going to be more of this creamy color. I, that's kind of what I wanted. I may change my mind and go with something more like this. If I do all of this, the border and everything, then I'll stick with this because you've got the yellows and stuff and I think it will work better. But if I go with just this, I may change it up to be more of a brown. Have that set on top of the brown. I think that would be really, really pretty. So, there's another one. I told you I kind of went a little crazy. The last one. I have been looking at this in the store many, many times, I believe. And I think I've kind of thought, should I get it? I really like it. And then I'd say no, and I didn't get it. And this time I finally just got it. And it's this. I love that purse. I'm a purse gal. Yeah. So that is what I am probably going to make one of these days. Now, this one actually came with the thread pack. So you've got all the threads and the embellishments and everything in there. I'm trying to get it so you can see it with the sun. Um, that's a flip-flop, in case you can't tell. And that was, it's on something. I don't see it on here right off. Clearly not for the mermaids. Mermaids do not need flip-flops. Um, but there's a lot, I mean, it's all the different flosses that you're going to need, the sparklies as well as the regular ones. So yeah, I will be trying to make that. Um, I don't, I won't make all of the things. So you can see here's the picture of the book that opens up. Um, if you wanted to make that, you can see the purse a little better from the front on view. Yes. I love this. So in case you wanted to know what this is, this is Victoria Sampler, a day at the beach sampler. Um, they call it a tote bag, book, measuring tape pouch, I guess. I guess that's what that's supposed to be. I'm not sure why. This is the fabric I got for it. It is natural. Cashel linen, natural 28 count. That's what I will use. So, there are all the things that I got. <laughs> I told you, I just went a little crazy. Okay. I hope you enjoyed all of those. So, let's move to the next thing. We're not quite done yet. I have a couple things left to tell you and share with you. And that is some of the floss files that I mentioned at the beginning. I showed you one, I believe, last time with some of the bags. I went and made some more, just so you can kind of see um, see what is available, what kind of what you can do with it, what you can make it look like. Okay, so these are very fall related. So here's one, and this one when it opens up. It's got a little yellow piece of felt for your needle. You want that? Notice I did get a little, the flower right in the center. I do fussy cut some of the areas so that, um, you know, you can make it give 
you know, what is viewed is what you want to see. Here's another one. I love the truck. Love the truck. And there's a truck on the back as well. My husband keeps trying to call, so <laughs> I may have to pause the video to, to answer that call. All right. And if you open that up, you have this lovely teal color kind of matches the truck. Yeah. And then this is a polka dot brown for the center. And I'll be right back. All right. Back to our regularly scheduled programming. <laughs> Um, okay, the next one, and you're going to see a theme. A lot of these are based off of the same type of fabric. It was big strips of different things that ran across it, and so I was able to cut it up and make a lot of different looks to it. And that's this one. So we've got our pumpkin patch at the bottom, a fence with some owls and crows at the top. The inside has a brown little... Um, Needle holder, kind of match the fence and whatnot. So there's one of those. Tractor, pulling a wagon with pumpkins. Unfortunately, sometimes my little snap gets in the way and it has to go right on top of some of this design, but you can see it's kind of got that, that going for it on the other side. And then this one has a, like a, sunflower yellow type of piece of uh, felt for the needles and then this is a completely different fabric but it's still kind of fallish kind of reminds me of fall anyway got this and it wraps around for the barn over here a little different barn got the cows who doesn't love cows they are kind of stinky though and then we got a nice red piece of felt the needle kind of go along with the barn and such so don't you know quote me 100% because I can't remember all the different sizes but I'll tell you approximately I think this is close to like a five by six when it's closed up this one is more like a four by six this like a five by five I believe this one might be a five by six and like a four by five, I believe. Like I said, not 100% sure on that, but somewhere around those. So I'm going to put those on my website. Well, not website, but my Instagram page where I sell stuff. So I'll have those up there. Now, two of them I can make extras. I can make another one of because I have enough fabric for it. And that is the, not that one. Here we go. The truck. I can make another truck. There would be slight difference in that the bottom of it will be down here. Okay. So either it will have to be just a shorter one instead of five inches, maybe more like four inches or something like that. Uh, it'll still have to be this long in order to get the truck in there. So it'll still be about six inches here, but maybe more like four instead because of where the fabric, I don't have as much fabric at the bottom to finish it. So it's sitting more in the center like this and be this big. So you could do that one if you wanted to. The other one that I have some more fabric and I can make a second one of is this one. Now, it will not have this barn, I don't believe, in the exact front, no. For that barn to happen, it would be in the back. It kind of would be, nope, not even the reverse of that. It would be more of some houses with a barn. So you can see, you could have that barn with that house. Um, let's see how this would fit. You could have, I believe, that house, and this would be the back, so it would fold around like that. So you'd have that with the sheep in the back. So... This other one would be more like that with the front and that on the back. So those are some ideas, and I don't know what size they would be. I'd have to measure to see um, how big each the images are. Probably at least five inches, five or six inches um, tall, and probably at least six inches for the width. So something along those lines is what I would have to do. Now, the other option you could do for both of these 
is to have these made into bags. Instead, if you want to have this to go with it, they would not be big bags because as you can see, it's not very tall. So, I mean, you're probably talking at the most 10 inches tall for this one. And this piece, much shorter than that. But I could make a bag to go along with the floss file if you really wanted it. But you would have to, um, you know, either through the comments or DM me or something once they're up, then you would have to indicate that that's what you'd want to do. So basically, as I've done before, it's first come, first gets. <laughs> So whether it's somebody wants to take the extra material and make more of the floss files or if they want it made into a bag, whatever, whoever contacts me first is kind of how I'm going to use that extra fabric. Okay, the last thing. Probably one of the most exciting. <laughs> I'm so happy. I got into Stitch Cut. Woohoo! Oh my gosh. I've heard about StitchCon for years, and the way that they were doing it before was that anybody who had been there before got first choice getting in, and so it made it really hard for new people to come in. Um, very, very small availability um, because of that, and so they changed it now. So everybody, regardless of past attendees or new attendees, had to sign in just like it was their first time um, to sign up for it. So I was able to get into the first weekend. So excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I do get to meet some new people that I know are going to be there already. Um, and I just, some of these people I've talked to through video stuff, like, you know, the comments or through Instagram. <sighs> I'm really looking forward to meeting Jody. Jody is a kindred spirit. She's very like-minded um, with how I think, and I think we're gonna have a great time being able to meet and uh, have some good stitching time as well. But yeah, it's, it's gonna be a lot of fun. I can't wait. So anyway, with that, I think I am done. I think it's gonna be less than an hour, so. Hopefully you made it all the way to the end here. <laughs> Got to watch all of it and all the funness that we were going through. I actually had quite a few stitching related things this time compared to last times. But yeah, it's it's been fun chatting with you again. And um, yeah, we'll see you probably in about a month. Have a good week and a good month and keep warm. <laughs> Bye.